Holy moly, that is a long video. I would say grab yourself a bucket of popcorn, but you know, you might actually need a whole steak dinner to get through this one. But anyway, hi, hello, welcome back to A Squirrel Plays. This video is going to be a little bit different than my others because this time around I am bringing my buddy Craig on board and we're going to be talking a bit about TTRPGs in the play-by-post style. Now you all know the way I normally do a video is that I write down most of a script so I have all my thoughts hopefully in one place despite some of them still getting away. But since I'm bringing Craig on board this time, I'll have to do this without a script. So instead, I just have a handful of questions and comments to cover with them, and we'll see how it goes. So grab your steak dinner and sit back, and let's watch the show. So really, I guess we will start just diving right into it. So say hi, YouTube. Hello, YouTube. <laughs> All right, so I sent you a list earlier, and I think it's pretty much the same. The first thing is general TTRPG stuff. It's a little getting to know who you are, where you're coming from, kind of how I opened up my channel, because I know you totally watched that video I made a year ago explaining what it was. And then the second section is play-by-post stuff, and then the third section is we'll kind of go over some community feedback, which, honestly, you addressed most of it in the thread, but we'll, we'll go over it anyway. So the first thing I got on the list is your experience with TTRPGs, not just play by post, but just straight up regular old TTRPGs. And the first question is, how many years have you been playing them? All right. Well, my first TTRPG was uh, not Dungeons and Dragons, actually. It was uh, Edge of the Empire, a totally different system. It was probably 23. 13, 2012, 2013. It wasn't too long uh, ago. No, it wasn't too long ago. And there was a pause. So we played um, like a session. I mean, not a session, like, I don't know, a year or so. I don't know how long, but we played a while. And then, so it's a Star Wars one. So then I moved to China. So they got a spaceship. And so my guy just stayed there and um, took care of the shop that they were like, scavengers or whatever uh and then, and then i left and i still really liked it so i looked up different systems but i didn't really get to touch it again until a little bit before you but really when we played um the first kind of real kind of plane i got again was um uh what's the campaign uh whatever with with nana the the oh uh infinitum circulus our 5e yeah, campaign infinitum yeah. circulus yeah yeah exactly i had dabbled in um 5e a little bit we'll talk about later because it was a play by post but that was about it and that was really besides a few one-off sessions that was my first D, D experience as well that's right um, I, so that I, that was really it i remember you being new to 5e and yeah uh, well, we'll actually we'll talk a bit more about 5e in a minute here, but yeah, was it three years later and 5e still, you still feel like a newbie because none of it makes sense? <laughs> I, it like, if I were to play a rogue, at least a rogue with the route that I took, I feel fine, right? I felt fine with my character. Mm -hmm. But then when I was a fighter, then I had to relearn it. And if I had to do a magic user or a monk, I, it would feel like it's my first time playing. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, See, kind was, of the base, I the was... basic mechanics is okay you know yeah. but in terms of like okay it's your character what do you want to do it's like um i don't know hold on you know that sort of stuff well let me look in my character sheet yeah yeah exactly yeah um, see i was thinking i guess i was just thinking that you had been in in ttrpgs for a long time like since you were little somebody had gotten you into them i didn't realize it was that fresh i would have had i discovered them I saw them in different, uh, what is it, like Foxtrot, the, the comic? Like there the, is a comic called Foxtrot, yeah. I think yeah, Jason's yeah, yeah. So that the, one. the younger one. Yeah, Jason. <laughs> yep. yep, Jason. And he was, I, I have a feeling it was d, d He'd always talk about plus one, this or that. Yeah, there and was some d, d really d appealed to me. I don't even know what it, what it was, but I was never able to find the game until college. <laughs> yeah. So it appealed to me. I danced around it. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to, and I haven't really been able to play until the last few years, even. Yeah, they've, they've, uh, I've never really known what they were for the longest time until the past handful of years. 
uh, when we started playing, right? That was my first dive into it. But I always did like the idea of sharing stories with somebody, building them together, going on a, quote, adventure, right? And putting things together, just because I like writing. But um, I, when we get into the play-by-post part, I'll actually dive into that a little bit more and share some horror stories, maybe. But um, the next question was... Well, see, you got less experience than I thought, but <laughs> of, the, of the time you have been playing, how often do you find yourself being the GM versus a player? Right, okay, so the first, well, the first time I played, obviously, my friend was the GM, and he got us. Um, I did play, like I said, a little play-by-post, because I just, I really wanted to play, and I knew I wouldn't have the time to do online or in person so i thought i didn't even know the term play by post but i thought we could just play on here and nobody else knew what was going on or anything so i was the gm not because i cared either way about it but because i was the one who wanted to you know go in there and do stuff mm -hmm. but then i just joined your game and when actually you guys advertised i was like i won't be able to do it but that's I would right. really like to. Yeah. I remember that. You're like, I'm I was like, just don't, don't my count name me in there anyway. Yeah. Don't 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 count me in, guys. Don't don't do anything. And then it it's you guys do it Sunday night, which is my Monday, which is my weekend. So it's like, oh, okay. And there have been times too where it, like, I don't know if I can do it. It's so hard. Um, but so I wouldn't I I I, I wanna stay away from GM because you know I'm not real available. But once I started to GM with the play-by-post, um, even though it's different, I, I really like it. And I have a feeling um, I won't be... I know a lot of people feel like they get put in the GM position because nobody else wants to. Yeah, kind well, I was hello. Like, <laughs> yeah, well, you, you, you're like the worst case scenario, right? Like they all abandon. It's like, I guess I'll do it, right? Oh, um, but I, I, <laughs> I feel like I love it. Like it's, it's, I'm not the, the quickest thinker. So I think in real life, um, it'll, I'll, you know, I'll have to work on that aspect, but in terms of just, just building the story and being behind the scenes, I, I really thrive on that more than I even thought I would. So I have a feeling this is, I'm going to be GM more than not through, uh, through choice actually. And I know a lot of people just kind of get pigeonholed and that's all they can do. Mm -hmm. uh, I do like play, but um, uh, so not too much. But I, I I'm I'm quite into it, um, and designing stuff on my own and whatever uh, different adventures, even if we're not gonna run them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The when I started learning, like before I got thrown into the GM position, when I was learning what D and D and these tabletop games were, I was like, man, you know, the idea of GMing that's what appeals to me more than actually playing it. So I had wanted to do it, but I was like, well, I should learn how to play it first. And then I got in a game where I learned a, a teeny, teeny, teeny amount and then got thrust into the GM position. So I was like, well, I got to learn now. So. I, I, I think you, if you're able to, you should play a while as mm -hmm. a player. If you're right. Like now when I do it, I'm not as scared. Um, I could do things on the fly a lot better or whatever. But had I... Like, I'm just thinking what it was like at the beginning. Uh, you know, you can read all you want on paper, but you don't know what it's like till you do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you got that real short end of the stick there. Sure do. So mm -hmm. let's see. Now, what are your preferred TTRPG systems? Not specific to play by post. We're just talking about still regular tabletop. So what's your, mm -hmm. some of your favorites and why? Yeah, so I will say uh, a disclaimer, as we've seen, I'm not necessarily the most experienced with playing, um, but I, I feel like I know enough to, to understand or have watched to, to get a feel. So in general, just as a more uh, broad stroke without naming any, any specific systems, I definitely um, lean towards the, the rules light. Mm -hmm. And I understand a lot of people particularly who have not played Rules Light, uh, interpret that as, like, watered down. <laughs> and I, I, I think I felt that a little bit when I first sounded uh, heard about it, too. Like, oh, it just sounds like the kid version, right? Or the simple version. 
Um, and some probably are like that, but the ones uh, that I've really seen and and kind of delved into are full, robust systems that simply allow you to build on top, and they expect you to build on top. Many of the systems will straight up say, "You when you play this, you'll find holes in it, and it's um, it's not a flaw; it's a feature." Right? We did that so that you don't constantly come back or have our one thing or have to fight. They don't specifically say this, but I know they're talking about fighting with players because the players will, this is what it says, or I built my character around this. You can't just change it on me. Um, instead, you have a nice system with the tools within there to decide what to do. So um, I'm pretty big into Mouse Ritter for, for a few reasons. But if you read the book, uh, it still sometimes surprises me how uh, concise he can be, just how he puts so much like a sentence um but there's a lot of open space and if you go on the discord which is a very lovely community and people go on there all the time very common questions are i can't find this in the book what do you do um so recently actually this is a good example somebody said so i see there's a rule for if you're attacking um with um i can't think of the word or not but it's not disadvantage but like if you know, somebody's undercover or you just can't swing as well, something like that. Impairment, that's what it's called. And I see that there are light mechanics that you can't see in the dark that you need a torch. But I, what happens if you don't have a torch and you're swinging? I, but I can't find these two rules together. And everybody goes, well, because he didn't put them together. Yeah. Like he gave you all those pieces. So now, you know, you can use impairment. That's great. I think most people agreed that. Some people might say, well, maybe you can see the shadows a bit. So just roll with disadvantage, right? Which is a little bit better than impairment in this game. So he doesn't try to cover every aspect, but you shouldn't. It's not an incomplete system. You have the tools within there um, mm -hmm. to do it. And I've actually seen him talk on there that the creator of Mouse Ritter, how he plays is not by the book. <laughs> he has all these extra, more complicated rules. Uh, with armor, oh, armor only works this amount of time, but it does this, stuff like that. But he didn't put it, and he's not going to come up with a, an improved version with those armor rules. He has that baseline that is now very easy to build up. Uh, it's a lot harder to break down and remove rules or change them than it is to build on top of that solid foundation. Um, so that's, that's kind of where I, I go towards. And so Mouse Fitter is a big one. Uh, the community is strong. I really like the creativity involved. You, you talked a bit before how the GM, well, just TTRPGs excited you just from the story aspect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Aspect. Uh, when I first went in, I liked the, like I said, I don't just Jason talking about plus one swords excited me. I didn't even know what it was. I, I was more for, from that aspect. I don't, I don't know. It's just the nerdy aspect. As I've played, that's gone um, more into the background and I love that community working with people uh, building a story together I hadn't even considered that before yeah it was um, it was the idea of like hey here's this story that goes however you want but and you know I've been writing since I could learn to write and spell and all that stuff or read and spell um, and I loved video games ever since I was a little kid so it was like the best of both worlds right it's like oh I can write this story but I can also drop a character in here and like level him up and get him stuff. It's like that sounds really cool, but no, nobody around here did any of that. You know, D and D was the <laughs> devil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'd luckily I didn't have the D and the D was the devil, but I don't think anybody. That's interesting because yeah, I've always written stories, and when I play video games, I would then design my own video games or own levels, get graph paper and sketch everything else. I never realized that that is this coming together, and it, it really is. I, I'm sitting there now sketching dungeons and sketching items and, and how does this mechanic work, which is exactly what I used to do, but now I don't have to code it all and, and play kind of this more rigid thing. Um, I can set it free, and then we, we can play it, like you said, it, as we build a, a story that we don't even know exactly how it's going to take place. Even if you have a more structure where you know more or less how it's going to end you don't know how you're going to get there you know yeah yeah so going back one step which kind of transfers us over here into this last little bit then we'll actually get into the play by post stuff um you're talking about the rules not being 
you know, everything being strictly written in mouse ritter and people going into the discord like, Hey, where's this? Where's this? How do I do this? You know, how do I put these two things together that are very clearly right in front of me? So I think that is one thing that people really, really like about 5e is that, and this is going to sound very big headed, like I'm just talking down on people, but I think a lot of people like the fact that everything is written down and they don't have to think about anything. Like it's just there. They just go, go look it up. You know, you don't have to come up with anything most of the time, obviously nothing's perfect, but that for me is the opposite of fun, which I have said many a times on this channel. Um, I don't like the constant stopping and looking things up and Neither did DM Scotty, which is why he made EZD6. The whole reason was to get rid of looking things up. Uh, so the last little bit here was kind of getting your thoughts on Dungeons & Dragons, at least the fifth edition, you know, the current one, most, I guess, most popular one. Again, I'm not a big D&D buff here, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like it's the most popular one just due to the fact D and D being more accepted at this point. So, do you do you feel like Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition is good for narrative storytelling? Mm. So, I'm sure you could work with it, but in order to do that, you would need either players who absolutely want that and have probably not started with Five E, <laughs> who have come from from a. a game where that's just kind of naturally it's like when you take a 5e player and you bring them to something like mouse ritter all the the people on the discord are the dms right and they're complaining like all they want to do is just kill everything that they see because that's just how they play naturally so if you've got somebody from the opposite that was used to a, a rules light we'll figure things out we'll, we'll experiment they might kind of naturally fall into it but I, I just yesterday heard some stat, and I don't know if this was all TTRPGers or just people who play Dungeons and Dragons, but apparently something like 80% of people playing right now, their their first system was 5e. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, there is you. <laughs> um, and so you, 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 you already have this framework that here are the rules, here are where we have to do things. And so you automatically get bogged down. So in order to, you would first have to overcome that hurdle of, oh, it's okay. I'm going to do things differently or just don't expect things to go a certain way. Um, but even if you had more open-minded players, it, the system, you, I, I would always saw people talk about fighting against the system and I didn't understand. I was like, just homebrew it, just change it. But there is so much involved. And I could understand a player getting frustrated if you got something out or change it if they had looked in advance and built their character to go there. Mm -hmm. And so you would have to, at that, you know, nip it in the bud sort of a thing and like, okay, don't plan anything or we're already going to get rid of this. But at that point, you're just making your own system anyway. Well, that's why I had <laughs> you guys in our current campaign say, hey, you know, we're, our max level is 10 lay out for me your best concept of what you plan to do. That way I can look ahead and tell you now, no, you can't have that or no, we're not doing that. So yeah, that was and it, to, and it could avoid. probably work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but if 5e was the only or one of the only systems, it probably be like, okay, that's just what it is. But there is so, so, so much more out there that if that's not your style of play, I just don't even, like don't don't bother with it. I remember I recently um I was telling you um in this other server this guy got um system um basic fantasy, which is basically just a copy of one of the older versions of D and D. It's quite simple, not as simple as say, Easy D six or Mouse Ritter, but you know there's a bit of a learning curve, but it's not that complicated. And one of the other people was. Um, on there who didn't know what it was. It was like, ooh, that looks cool, but is it easy as 5e? And we were just like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Easy. <laughs> like, five, five, 5e is not easy. I, you know, basic fantasy isn't the, you couldn't pick it up in five minutes, but you could get a pretty good, you could get running in 15, 20 uh, as a player, and in a while you'd have a pretty good grasp of the game, right? Like, you could do it. 
uh, not with 5e, but that's the maybe coming off of kind of the third edition that was even more complicated. People thought it was really simple, and then that just kind of goes around. But um, yeah, so when you come in and you think that's the simple, and you have all these rules, and you think you have to follow them, it's it, it, it's hard to break away from that. It, but people need to realize that if if you want to do more narrative based or something, just go to a different system. It's fine. You could even stay within D and D and find some pretty good systems, or go. There's so many varieties. There's so many um, different types that aren't even combat-based or that are based towards this or that or whatever. Um, I really encourage people to, um, excuse me, to, um, to branch out, to look at all these things. Uh, 5e probably could. I know some people have done more story-based stuff on it, um, but I think either the people playing would have to really read the rules a lot which I think had I discovered this in middle school and high school, I would have been okay. Because I would have just sat there and poured through them. But I don't have time or energy for that now. <laughs> well, you know? let's see. You you know Connor over in uh, BSF. Yeah. So he he invited me to a game some years ago, and I would never played No Experience. And he was trying to run me through his character creator. I think I was going to be a dragonborn something. I was like, yeah, dragon dude, that looks cool. Lizard man, sure. And he was trying to guide me through it, and I, I don't know if we got halfway through, two-thirds, I don't know how far we got. I just quit in the middle of it. I said, dude, <laughs> this is too complicated. If it's this hard to make a character, I don't want to play. <laughs> it's just yeah. like, this is not I, for I me, man. <laughs> when we made, because in my Star Wars game was really the only time I'd done this before. I, I'd help people through 5e, but I just used a program, and we didn't care too much about it, because we didn't. none of us knew what we were doing. For the Star Wars one, if I remember correctly, it was really simple. Um, so then when I came uh, for, for our game to do 5e or whenever we did, um, God, I hated doing one-shots. We had some pretty characters we could build eventually, but every time we make a character, it's like, oh, what's a feat again? Oh, we have the, oh wait, we have two of these. Well, I don't, I don't know how this works with this. Wait, and then I have a proficiency? It's just like, oh, God, it's such a headache. Yeah. Um, uh, oh. Another system, re real quickly, you had asked about systems that are like, another system uh, that is still in, in beta, it's um, been released for, for backers. For um, it's, So I've looked at it. Um, it looks, I, I sent you a screenshot. It does look more complicated. There are like eight classes, and they each have their special things. But when you choose your class, you start with three skills, but each class just has your three starting skills. So when you make a character, you choose your class, and then you just have you don't have to like sit here and decide and plan out and look at the trajectory of where this character could go. You just you just have your three classes. And as you play, then when it comes to get another one, you probably know a lot more. So that's okay. But the way that five E and similar things, you have to like totally build this character with all these mechanics from scratch is just exhausting if you don't know what you're doing or have it planned, you know? Mm-hmm. And you, and you get people who who know exactly what like oh, I'm gonna build this build and this and that and it's yeah, fine. Yeah, they got but, the whole thing memorized. Yeah, <laughs> but it's exhausting for anybody else. Yeah, like I swear I'll watch you know some silly YouTube vids like from XP to level three or something you know and he'll make jokes about five E you know and the skits and stuff and you read the comments and people are like oh you could have just wizard could have cast this and that with this feat and you know all this other stuff and it's just like man. <laughs> I would say y'all need a hobby, but I think that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's the weird thing. Um, uh, again, with the systems, one one reason, thing I like about Mouse Rider, I like how, because you're mice, I can just turn anything into, it, you know, I've really, we've leaned into that. Oh, there's something on the ground, what can you use it for? Yeah. I regret not having much human civilization. I, we're gearing towards bringing you guys to a place. So you can be wandering in a room, go, wait, is that a wardrobe? Hold on. Go up there, gnaw off a button. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna turn a this shield. Into a shield lately. Yeah, what a cool idea, right? Um, so you, you get to build it as you go on, but then it's not real complicated. Uh, but to have to sit there and decide all these things, and also it's non-linear, not in terms of the story, but so much of the um, the adventures that you see pre-made adventures for Mouse Raider, for example, and I know a lot of systems do this. There's not a whole lot there. Like for the mud, you guys got stuck in the mud. I was <laughs> like. I, I literally put stuck in mud, <laughs> you know, and I had an idea. Maybe they could get attacked while they're there. Maybe they will. Well, but and, and then you guys were didn't quite know what to do. And then the idea started flowing. 
never in a million years would I've, I thought you guys would use a, a bottle rocket to shoot yourself out, right? You're but, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I wasn't serious. I was like, sure, why not, you know? And, there were, and then you guys, what if we put sap on the wheels? Well, you're in mud. But now that's now another time I'm sure you guys will find that. And so just interacting with the world is really fun. But when you have these complex systems, you go, oh, that was like the almost objectively wrong way to do it. Because this build could do it, again, in a pretty much an objectively better way. It's like, well, where's the creativity in, in, in the, the... You have puzzles, but the puzzles have a correct way to, to solve it. But where's the the puzzle that you and even the GM don't know what's going to happen because you're just interacting with the stuff that you got there. Yeah. And that's missing with those complicated ones. Yes, that's a problem I've run into many a times as a GM. And if anybody is wondering why we put sap on the wagon wheels, so I have a character and his mouse reader play-by-post campaign. He is a sap tapper, and sap is the answer to everything so far. Maybe well, that, <laughs> threatened a couple other rats with sap at one point. <laughs> the um, that's another thing. One thing that I really, until we played this game, I was not super keen on about Smout, Mount Mouse Ritter is you can just generate a character by press of a button. Yeah. You have three attributes you could switch to. That's the only thing that you could do, and you get a background. And I was like, okay, I would like a little bit more agency. But you, you never in a million years, I'm sure, would have chosen the sap tapper and done this stuff. But you've got this whole thing built around, because that's what you were given. Yep. And now we have this whole, there's so many fun things with the sap grenades and using this, and can we climb the wall with sap that we, we never would have thought of, but those are just the tools we're given. And your character is absolutely developing, but it's through that rather than you sitting beforehand deciding who he's going to be. We're figuring it out as we go along. And that surprised me. I thought that I was going to, you know, want a little bit more out of that. But it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Just work with the hand you're given. So now, now we can actually, uh, that's actually a good segue. We can actually get into the play-by-post stuff now. Now that we, we know who Krieg is and where he's coming from. So your play-by-post experience, um, unless I miss something, it sounds like that's what you've done more of than actual table topping no because what i did a little brief which i'll go into there's not too much there it was short and there weren't a whole lot of it took a long time (laughs) um so it was just a brief thing i had a full year or so with in person and then several years with you i have done yeah so not as much there uh my first experience like i said was with the 5e and one person knew how to play, and he was, I would, like, come on, post, and he'd get on, make his post, and then he wouldn't again until I tagged him. One or two people played, and other people would wait until the week was up, and I'd poke them, and then they would, like, if we were in the, you know, what's happening? I've, I can't understand. What, what are we doing? You know, this is why now when I do I have all these rooms and all these systems. Yeah. It's like, I need you to know after, you know, five days of work and all this stuff, you can easily go on there. And then they would roll and miss. And you're like, oh, nothing happened in a week. You know, and pretty soon nobody was into it because we couldn't remember the story. And yeah, we can get into this now. But now I, I've realized I, I want every message to basically further the story in some way. Or it's just exhausting. <laughs> it's just defeating. If you're trying to do something and you roll and you fail like a save, and, oh, we have to find something else, or, oh, I'm injured. That's fine. The story progresses. If you swing and you miss, you just skipped your turn. And now you're not going to be real motivated to come back. And that was my experience with the first one. So I guess there was a lot of experience, but it felt like it was negative. And so I draw more the negative from that, whereas I feel like this one is more positive. So I discounted the other one, but I think it's really influenced what we're doing now. Would you consider that a play-by-post horror story, or do you have something more entertaining? Or, or I, I, I don't. Um, I'll, I'll bring this more later, but before I started this other one, I looked up yeah, horror stories, and I think one of the big things for any tabletop game, but maybe, I don't know, especially play-by-post, but um, is who you bring to the table. And I only went with people that I already knew. Um, maybe not in tabletops, but I already knew really well. And I knew that there wouldn't be anything. We didn't even, you know, you do a session zero, but we didn't have to do too much. 
is we already know our limits because we know each other. Um, well, maybe online, but we knew each other. So luckily, I've avoided that, but it was a very conscious decision. So if you remember for, for the, uh, the current one that we have now, I put it in two servers and I said, I don't really want you guys sharing this right now, maybe someday, uh, because I know the, the groups from these two here and I'm not really expecting much drama. But as soon as it goes out to this guy who, you know, heard about it or that is a friend of a friend, now we're inviting, well, Discord. Opening the, the door. Possibility. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And maybe after we've been established long enough, um, we can deal with that in a fine way. But I was very afraid of that, and I've read enough horror stories that the worst I've had is, uh, in this current one, a character just, a player just disappeared for a while. And, and they're back now. I don't know what happened. And then, yeah, just ex just boredom. You wait a week, somebody does something, it doesn't even succeed. Nobody really knows what's happening in the story. Every time I say, what do you want to do? I have to re-explain the entire story. So it's not like a bad, it's just like, play by post sucks. You know? And I'm pretty sure I ruined TTRPGs for a few of them, because that was their only experience, and they're like, yeah, it's not for me. You know? <laughs> oh, you were sorry, that guy. guy. <laughs> yeah, so I'm the horror story, right? Like, Whoa. oh, this DM was awful. I tried just... to play with this guy, at Craig. He run the whole thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, I think they'd probably have more of that. But luckily, I don't. I don't have anything interesting, uh, particularly. But I have um, a few scratches and scars to learn from. Well, that's just experience. So I mentioned. Yeah, that's just what it is. I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier at the beginning of this that I had a somewhat of a horror story about. So there's, it's not play by post, but you you could kind of file it under something similar. So I don't know what this is actually called, but it's a writing, I would consider it a writing exercise. And this is why it, it interested me and seemed so cool. You get, usually I think is you get one other person. So it's just a duo, you and, you and one other. Um, probably you can get multiple, but I think it would get super hairy, super fast. And what you do is you both write a story together. You set some ground rules first. Usually it's like, hey, you're not the main character. You're not OP, blah, 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 blah. But you're not playing tabletop, right? You're writing a, an actual story where you control one character and somebody else controls another character. But you're both building the world, trying to make a co coherent story, complete with characters and world building and all that. And it seemed like a good challenge, like, okay, because you, you write a chunk, and then, then that other person writes a chunk. Then they throw it back to you, then you write a chunk, then they write a chunk, then you just go back and forth. And it's like, okay, so you have to work with what they come up with. Like, you kind of lay a scene, and then they put on top of it, and then you're, you're making, I guess you could say, more like you're building a sandwich together, right? You're just stacking stuff up on top of each other and trying to make it work. And it seemed... Like a lot of fun. Seems like it'd be really neat. So I got around trying to find somebody, and all I kept finding was horror stories. You know, you keep... It was 99% of the horror stories were some woman was complaining about how some man partnered up with her, and he was just super horny. That's all he wanted to get into. <laughs> and I was like, well, okay, yeah, I can see that and believe that super easy. Um so I, I scouted around for a long time and looked and found somebody. I was, uh, it was some woman. So I was like, okay, I know I'm not going to be that guy. So the woman, <laughs> the woman will be all right, right? This, this is going to be good. So we were talking about the kind of world we were going to work in. It was going to be a fantasy, this, that, and the other. And man, she was horny. <laughs> she, was, <laughs> she was just as bad, man. She took it like after two exchange chunks. Like, I wrote up a pretty good chunk, and then she barely sent anything back. It was just enough to progress it to the next chunk. So then I wrote my chunk, and then her her second, I swear it was just her second or third chunk, went straight into to Hornyville, you know? That's where it went. And, man, she was sending me pictures and everything. I was like, I didn't ask for this, man. Like, I'm not, not complaining, but I didn't ask for it. <laughs> so. She, I, uh, she's I read all went, these posts. Yeah, I never went back, man. I never that that ruined me. I can't do it. So, you know, and maybe this is why you thought I had a little bit more experience. I remember I telling you um, when I was a kid, I did wasn't TTRPG, but like a yeah, you like a narrative where you we write stories and go on. 
and yeah, I guess I guess it's, it's luckily I didn't have any of that experience, but I was the 14. I literally might have been 14 where I go on there and you have to get your character proved because it's it's not just one on one. So there is regulation probably. So that crap doesn't happen. Yeah. But I was like, what, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Like, you know, and DMing random. I don't even know how I could DM random people, but like find somebody and DM them. Hey, how long did it take for you to get your character uh, approved or whatever? And then I got like a warning. Stop talking to people. Stop asking. You'll get done when you get done. And, you know, I wanted that cool character that was mysterious. So you don't know a backstory. They're like, no, he needs to have an actual backstory. And uh, that turned me off from that. But um. Yeah, so I th- th- that's interesting because I, I wonder if there's a maybe dealing with that instead of just the two people, there's a bigger umbrella to t- <laughs> try to, to regulate some of that stuff or whatever, you know? I don't know, man. I wrote that one off. I was like, all right, y'all, y'all can figure it out. I'm just going to go back to writing solo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, anyway, so my horror stories aside here, uh, what would you say are maybe not the biggest, but some of the bigger advantages of a play-by-post compared to regular tabletop. Now, whether that's tabletop in person or tabletop online, just play-by-post versus tabletop in general. Um, well, obviously the ones that most people see is that um, it's more convenient time-wise, okay? Um, this is good in a couple ways. So, you know me, I, I have a lot of spare time in little areas. But it's hard to find the consistent time. So if, for those listening on, in fact, we called our, I, I named it, <laughs> uh, our current uh, campaign is with mushrooms, fungus of some sort. And so we named it Sporadic Activity. That's right. Because <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, you know, oh, my kid's sick here. Uh, this kid's, uh, now the other kid's sick. Well, now we're all sick. Oh, there's a doctor's appointment. Oh, well, they have, the, and it's just like. Well, you never know. So, so it's hard. That's why I, I don't dare DM one. Um, now, I mean, you know, um, a character or a player is sick. Or just wait a few. Like, it, there's no pressure. There's always a little bit of pressure, even though everybody's super uh, kind. You know, you like you feel bad derailing it. I'm not derailing it anymore. Or derail has a different connotation in TTRPGs. But I'm not delaying it and making everybody wait, you know, and they can move on. So... There's the if you don't have time you can do it, but also if you're inconsistent with your time where you just need a break, you can do it as well. That's really nice. Um, of course, everybody, most people probably join for that. But one thing that I found is kind of nice is so when we play our game, I think most people probably play a week, once a week or so, and then less when people can't show up and you know once you become adults, that's pretty common. Um, now you get several hours of play at once. You get a bigger chunk. The campaign moves quicker. But it's kind of nice to every day, pretty much, get a little bit of play in. And so every day, like, oh, a little this. Sometimes it's not, but um, it, it's fun. It's not just like, oh, once in a while we get to sit down. So I, I really enjoyed that. Some people might, like, no, I want it once and then move on. But I like living in the world and in that creativity. And so we always get to sort of bounce off that. I think um, that that's one positive. I also think that it's been, and this is my, my play style, um, especially being a first time dm you know we're building the world and stuff around it and so it's nice to well i'll take a a little bit of it step aside being a first time dm it's nice to be able to stop right so when we had that little shack you're like what's the roof life and i was like oh man i don't know (laughs) the inside yeah I i don't know but like it didn't matter i could wait two days and you guys might not even notice like sorry it's busy this is what the roof is like, right? <laughs> now, that will always happen. Um, but, um, and it, you probably learn faster doing it live. But even now, I f- if I did uh, a campaign now, I could think on my feet a lot better. When I prepare my adventures, they're far more. Uh, I know what sort of stuff to prepare already, even. So it's really nice as a DM. But also, uh, the original point that I was actually going for is I think we can really build it up together. So when we decided to do the the sap grenades, um, we kind of mentioned it, and then we don't. Have, we can you can even do, uh, you know, what we're doing right now. But we have some time to kind of discuss and, and work through stuff, or somebody can can tell me, oh, I want to do this, and because we have that little bit of time and wiggle room, I feel like the players can um, really interact with kind of the meta, like where the world is going. Um, a little bit better without being more confusing mm-hmm. um, because of the pace of things. 
uh, that was another thing I was like, oh, it's actually kind of nice. I feel like this would be, uh, when I'm in a, a live one, yeah, I want to be able to talk with the DM and kind of build stuff up, but I sort of expect them to have it handled because they, they've spent hours preparing it, right? Like, and, and that's where we're going, and that's fine. But when we're able to do this, I feel like there's just, um, it's a little bit more malleable. Theoretically, they've spent hours. Uh, I don't. <laughs> I I don't think you should. I, I've... I, I think you got thrown in also in kind of the wrong, you know, here's this really complex, <laughs> this really, I don't know, complex, but detailed uh, campaign, you know, that you can go through with all the characters and all the plots and all this. And uh, one complaint that I've seen from 5e is people, I've heard people say they don't necessarily hate 5e, but 5e for being billed as, uh, it's great for people who are new to the hobby, it doesn't really give any tools uh, for the GM. I don't and see so you just... how in the world 5e is good for new players. I mean, I hear it all the time, and I can't, I just can't buy it. I was like, there's so many other things to start them out on that would make their life so much easier. It's like, not to diss 5e or say you shouldn't play it, but my goodness, find something simpler to, to show them. <laughs> I agree. I, I'm wondering, I, you see stuff where they're uh, introducing it to schools and stuff. I was like, cool. But f are you kidding me? How are these kids? Yeah, I my my theory is I've said uh, I think coming off of three E. Yeah, I was I was just about I to say. I think that they just it's so much easier. Don't worry. But then these new people and then don't know any better. So like, oh, I guess it's easy. Yeah, because it's easier than you know three point five or whatever. I, I'm thinking that's what it is. Because uh, it's not. It's not simple. Even yeah. if you loved the system, it's not simple. It's not easy to get into. Yeah, I was just talking to a few lads the other day um, on some forum and. Oh yeah, five E is simple, and, and you know, and I had the same response. I was like, "What, what are you smoking?" And they said their answer is, "Well, compared to such and such." And it's like, "Oh, well, yeah, you know, calculus <laughs> is simple compared to, I don't know, rocket surgery, but like, that doesn't make it simple." <laughs> so. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I. That's what I'm getting. Yeah. yeah. So. But, but even then, I've seen people like, but there, there's not much, many tools so you go in there and then you, you develop all this stuff whereas when i went in i had already you know i took a break from the um sporadic activity mm -hmm. and then i really read into stuff and i saw like oh wow you, you shouldn't be I mean, you could if you want i guess but however much prep you're gonna do they're gonna derail it anyway yeah. so there's so many ways to not put in that <laughs> but uh, but still you have a general idea you know um, and of the world, I think your world is, is uh, more fleshed out. Now I think the world is pretty fleshed out, but you guys really helped develop that, y even ways I think you didn't necessarily know. And, and I think, I don't think it's impossible by any stretch of the imagination with in person, but I think um, the, we were given some space to do that in, um, yeah, by play by post. Even like, hey, this is kind of weird. What's the rule on this? You know, and I can kind of explain it and we can wiggle, you know, like the sentient are insects sentient or this you know we have yeah. mounts and like they're sentient they're fine until you have them and they just sit in the stable and you're like ooh, you know it feels a little bit odd it's yeah, all that, that's fictional. a dumb like, bug over there he's he's yeah, not okay well, <laughs> uh, you know it's just like okay i've been thinking about it for a while but i wasn't i didn't feel pressured to really solidify that because even right there we can step back and decide and, and it's not a big deal and you could do that without it but i feel like it, it it worked really well in play by post, and nobody's confused. Yeah. So that's some advantages. What about disadvantages in play by post versus? Or I'll get the word. What are, what are some of the biggest disadvantages in play by post versus regular tabletop? Other than the fact everything you say is written in stone. Yeah. Um. Which is another positive. It's nice to just search it. Actually. Yeah, yeah. Then you got those people. <laughs> like, what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then that's the flip side. Luckily, uh, my players have been good. But there have been times where I'm like, "Oh yeah, remember when we did that thing? Hold on, let me search it." Um, Bleep. <laughs> you know, you're supposed to write them down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, no. I've I've done it in a positive sense where I forgot. But you're right. It could be weaponized. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're right. So that could be a, a positive or a negative. Um, so the obvious one is it's slow. Um, like I said. Um, I think we don't have it on here. I'd like to talk real, sorry, talk real quickly about maybe a few things that I feel like is, is helping uh, our current one work because I've seen so the vast majority of play-by-post that I've 
seen online. I guess maybe people just talk about them. They've it's been like my first one. It hardly took off at all before it, it crumbled. Even if ours stopped now, I feel like we've gotten some development and stuff. So, um, but one of the things is, yeah, it's really slow, and so you need to have at least some sort of movement forward. But you got to be okay with that. And some people just, you know, that's say, great. I that, would, you know, I would argue <laughs> that while I guess each session in a play by post feels slow, I would make the argument at least from what I've seen, that the play-by-post campaign actually moves faster than a regular tabletop campaign because you're, you're feeding it, like you talked about earlier, just little bits each day, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. It's like trying to make a good habit, right? You just do a little bit each day, and it eventually accrues into something magnificent. So the play-by-post, you're just inching it forward a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, whereas a tabletop session you feed it in these giant chunks and if you miss one session you're you're you've lost so much ground that that play by post that's just getting a little bit each time all of a sudden starts zooming ahead of you i feel you know, like I, it can go faster over the course a long course of time so if we yeah, i hadn't thought about that so it definitely in some ways feels fast right so yeah. if you if you, if you saw my recent post, you might not have seen it in there about how um, there are slugs in this current adventure. And yeah, it's going yeah, by yeah, yeah. the slugs. But okay, a lot of that, and I felt this a few times. It's like when people are at a four way uh, stop and everybody stops waiting for the other person to go because nobody knows who's supposed to go. Yeah, uh, there was a big pause. So sometimes people are like, "So what are you guys gonna do?" Like, "Well, I was waiting for this. I, I was waiting for that. Well, I was waiting for you. You didn't explain what effect it had." And I was like, "Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I thought it was obvious." Right. <laughs> um, uh, but on the whole, and we'll get better as we get used to it, it feels a lot. Yeah, if you look at it, literally, maybe nothing happened. Almost nothing happened. But every single day, there's progress, even if it's slower. Um, I think the last thing where we did, you guys went a really short, kind of a hex crawly thing to, um, to the fridge. And then you went back. Uh, that could be one at most two sessions in person, like two hour sessions, right? Yeah, it took I'll us, say, I don't know how... We've covered a lot of ground, man. We've like, we went to that house. Uh, poor Soapy got ate by the snake. We met the Crimson Knights. Then we went to the Crimson Knights. We had the bit in the forest where we met the chipmunk, and this is all out of order. Um, stuck in the mud <laughs> with the wagons. We had to figure out how to get them out. And then the willow tree burned down, all this other stuff. And then the stuff in town we've done, like getting stuff made and uh, the little harvest festival thing we're doing. We've done a lot and we've only been at this for a few months i feel like and then you compare that to granted this is 5e maybe that's why i'm saying play by post move faster but in 5e it took us three two-hour sessions to get through that first little goblin temple yeah, well so that's an interesting but i would have to look at, i don't know how long we've been playing so but even this is something that you brought even if it is it does go faster i think than we think and I'm trying to make the adventures a little bit shorter so that it doesn't last like six months. Mm -hmm. But even if it does take a bit longer, as soon as yeah, you miss a session in real life, like <laughs> it's not it's not necessarily that hard for the play by post to catch up because of that. Because you're not gonna miss you, don't you might really miss a miss few days. But that's, a, <laughs> but that's even if you missed a few days, it's not missing that much. Yeah. Yeah. So that's an interesting, yeah. And a, a quick sorry, but I've been impressed with how much I've liked the play by post. You're right, that was another thing that I that I liked. Um, like when you guys split the party, I, we didn't have to sit there and have somebody go in another room or wait. I could run these two separate adventures basically at the same time mm -hmm. with zero issue whatsoever. Uh, the little mini games when we go down, I think it's it's just kind of fun. I don't know how we would do that as an individual. And um, we'll see. But I think there might be a little bit more RP in the chat room just because that's where we're used to talking. Yeah. Where we tried to do that in our 5e campaign. But I, I, it was hard for me because that's not how I see my character. I'm used to talking with my character, so to convert it, it was a little bit odd. But that, yeah. Yeah, so it, it doesn't, even if it is slower, and it might not always be slower, it doesn't feel particularly slow if you work to craft it that way. And not to pat myself on the back, but I remember what that felt like. So I've worked really hard to, to try to make sure, you know. And so the, the system choice is a huge part of that. We don't have attack rules. We don't have to look stuff up. Yeah. Um, 
battles are really fast because people are going to run away or going to die within a few rounds. You know who's. Um, and I, I was very intentional with this because I remember the slog that it can feel. So I feel like if you set it up right, it can feel, feel like, yeah, a lot's going on. But it could go slow. <laughs> um, and then another, just to, to go on with the negatives, um, even with online, you know, you miss a lot. You get, um, you don't get the voice. It's kind of nice. It's not as intimidating, but you don't get uh, intonation or, or funny voices if you want to do that. You don't get, um, I don't know, I guess we, we josh around with each other in the, the out of... In the text chat? Uh, yeah, yeah, in the text one. We, we do get that, but yeah. um, it's a little different, you know. Oh, actually, different. we got a comment from... Hold on. Hold oh. on just a moment, Scott. Sorry. Hello. Ow. Editing Squirrel here. This is where Krig had to walk away for a little bit because the repairman showed up at his house. You see, the poor guy's washing machine broke, and when you're sharing a house with three kids and a wife, that is no small problem. Unfortunately, the repairman was unable to fix the washing machine, and it currently looks like Krig will have to buy a new one. So needless to say, he came back just a little bit grumpy. Alrighty. Why are you grumpy? Well, the the washing machine broke. Yeah. Right? It's just like a popping sound. I, I swear I hadn't even turned it on. I was like, what's going on? So it didn't work. Right. I got five people in the house. I can't not have a washing machine. We have to use it every single day, right? Well. So. Good <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway. I, say, I uh, think I was about to mention uh, Josh's Boxes comment on YouTube. We're, we're going to get to all those in a bit. Um, okay. But I can't remember why I was about to bring that up. Something. Oh, oh, oh you're talking about the funny voices and stuff. That's right. And yeah. getting in character. So. Yeah, he was saying I think it would feel a little lifeless to have to type it all out. He hasn't played play by post, so we will I, I got some comments on that one, so we'll get to that when we get to it. But um okay. we we talked about the advantages, disadvantages. Uh now what do you think? Uh, and there's really only two platforms I can think of. The question is what types of platforms are good for play by post? And my only two examples I can think of are a chat style thing like Discord or you know, pick your pick your poison there. Uh, but the idea is a direct insta chat kind of thing or a forum posting style kind of contraption. Yeah. I even if I don't know if they do, even if they had a specific app or website set up, I feel like it would still follow into those those you know, there might be better features, but I feel like that's yeah. It'd be a um yeah. What what was your specific question? Um which one do you prefer? Or which do you think would serve better to run a play by post game? Okay, I wouldn't say serve better. I think for us and what I would like definitely the instant messaging. Because like you said, we get a little bit each day. Kind of fun. Sometimes we get lots, right? Like sometimes talking about how long stuff takes. Mm -hmm. Uh you might even go a day or two, everybody's busy, somebody's sick, whatever. And then sometimes everybody's online and ready to go, and we just go through lots. Um and so you, you, you just get that. I know it play by post, well, started by post, by mail. But um, in the internet age, right, it did more forum based, obviously, because that's what they had. And it's interesting to me. I've looked a little bit at it and read some stuff. Um, and people tend to, it's, that one is definitely slower. Even if you were to do once a day, you're probably not going to do that many posts. They could, but... I think people probably put a little bit more thought and flair into their writing. So if you wanted a little bit more of a written work sort of thing, right, you would sit there and do it. You could do it in instant messaging too, but it's easy just to be like, nah, or like, okay, I'll do this, you know? Yeah. But if you're like, this is, I have a post and it's going to post and they might not even see it and they won't, you know, um, you're probably going to write a little paragraph. Uh, so it seems more style thing, though I do think most people... Um, would probably benefit with the more instant messaging style. Yeah. Um, the different channels and rooms, I feel like, is super useful. Yeah, although, I mean, a for if you had a specific forum set up, I think usually you have your one thread <laughs> or something, I yeah. don't know. It could be kind of nice to have them there. We could look at the lore and stuff. But we can, it's not as nice in an instant messaging because the scrolling, right, it's not designed. Yeah. So, like, when you did it with, with you and me, what we're doing, you had, you know, the handouts. 
and I'm trying to find ways to like consult, not consult, but take the information that you guys have learned and put it in a way that you can go back. And, you know, we need to build and our I own wiki as we go. That I, I've I've thought about the the program that I use that the Notion. I haven't quite looked yet, but you can press build wiki, and I, I've sent my adventures to Mouse Ritter, and they can just without Notion look at it. And so I don't, you know, that's, that's kind of what I'm thinking that that would be fun eventually. Yeah. Um, but you see, or I outsource like the maps. Yeah. Not, not the map, but like the, the zone and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so it'd be nice to have that all within the same map, but it seems, everybody seems to be, seems to be okay. Yeah. No, it's going smooth. Um, what about what game system do you think lends itself well for play by post now? I think we've already said 5e doesn't seem to be a very good system for play by post, not because I just like ragging on 5e, but because it's, uh, you had mentioned, I think in the call already, plus I saw it mentioned in Discord, you know, really sucks when you wait so, so long, and then, then somebody misses and nothing happens. Mm -hmm. Whereas in yeah. Mouse Ritter, you know, nobody misses, you always hit, it's just how much damage you do, but at least, hey, something happens, so what what game system do you think is not designed and geared for a play by post, but would work well in play by post? Yeah. I think the, the attack role, getting rid of that or adjusting it in some way, it, it's hard to, for me to imagine now playing a play by post with that, with though most do even successful ones. So I don't know, but um, that a system without that, I think uh, would do wonders. Um, and then, I think a simple, so either a system that everybody knows super, super well, or a simple system. Rules light or not, like a simple one. On the one hand, you have all the time in the world to look up rules. But I think most people, like I said, are doing it because they don't have the time or energy mm -hmm. to do a proper game. So, you know, then you have to look up rules from that. And, and maybe everybody's online and you could get a little spurt stuff, but it's been stopped because people are discussing rules. Or they go back and forth. Or you're tired and you're on the bus and you just want to, okay, on the way home, I'm just going to like look, see what's happened, make my post, and then, you know, that's my post for the day. And then you're like, oh, what's this? I have to look up this rule. Or what can I do? Or, or what is this? You know? And if people are online at the same time, you ask, and you have to wait, then the DM sees it, then they respond, then they might have to wait for you. And it's just this whole thing. So a nice, simple system where there's just, it, I don't know, it could be an advantage to look up rules, but I, I have a feeling it would be less of a, an advantage more often it would just slog everything down so a system where you just don't have to think too much about it um so mouse reader fits both of those but there are a lot of systems that that could fit that i think those those are the two big things something simple that people can go on and not know and stuff and not have to look into it and um and uh, not having to do attack rolls or really too many ro rolling is fun but it slows things down Mm -hmm. I was going to uh, say, uh, Easy D6 might make a good play by post, but then I got to thinking about it. It's like, well, there's a lot of, you do a lot of whiffing in that one, you know, with your armor saves, because you only have a couple hits. Um, so there's a lot of chances to get out of it. So that might, I feel like you could run into it a lot where, you know, you wait a few days for somebody and then they're like, oh yeah, I roll. And it's like, oh, okay, I whiffed. <laughs> <laughs> and there might be, I would have to look at it again. There might be ways to, to adjust that or get rid of it. something like 5e if you got rid of that it would get rid of so many things right mm -hmm. so many weapons or things adjust that so you're like we well, you get rid of that half of my character is built on you know building up my <laughs> my ac or my my attack roll or something like that right um but a simpler system like that that doesn't have all the the mechanics geared towards that it might be easier to throw that away or something but, but you'd have to look at that before but i, I would definitely suggest people look and is there a way where we could get rid of this attack roll? Nothing wrong with attack roll, just yeah. slow. <laughs> yeah, you'd really do want to try and find fluff. You'd want to find the fluff and cut it out for a play by post. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And then you can build, like I said, we're, we're getting more complex, but you would go, no, we're not going to do this because this is going to slow things out. You know, you would know specifically what you want or don't want to do. Yeah, buddy. All right. Well, let's. Get down to the little bit of the community feedback we got. So I made a post on YouTube uh, saying, well, hey, we're going to make this video. You know, anybody got any questions, comments, hate mail they want to send? And I only got a little bit. And you saw the thread I made in Discord. There was a little bit there. And you were 
going back and forth a little bit, but we will cover that. So the first thing I got is from Nick over on Discord. Uh, he just has a comment saying scheduling is important. It kind of sucks when people are separated and can't reply or keep going because they're all waiting on one individual, such as a rogue trying to pick a lock. And uh, pretty much the same thing as, you know, you wait and wait and wait, and then somebody comes in and makes an attack roll. Poof, they whiff, you know. It's, uh, I feel yeah. like we kind of went over this a little bit about getting people on the same schedule. Did we talk about that at all or no? Nah? Well, the last discussion a little bit. So we just talked about attack rolls. But yeah. so here's a few things that I did. Like I said, my last experience at so much of how I've designed it is to look at that. So I didn't do a grid system. One, I was excited by zones. I kind of wanted to try that. I did zones so that they're still visual, but the grid system, and there are different programs that are good for that. Owl radio and stuff, but then you have to move and think about it. You have to wait for them. To, it just seems like it's going to take a lot of time. Um, for the attack order, we decide who goes first, and then we do one side, then the other side. So the PCs, then the NPCs. So that if, you know, let's say you're ready, but it's Steph's turn, but he's not ready, so you have to wait. And then finally he gets it, and now it's your turn, but now you're not. It's like, oh, you could just do it when you're ready. Um, so that would be one thing I would try to find a way to, to allow people to, to go more often, not have to wait. Sometimes you'll have to, the last person, or yeah, if you can't get through to the doors unlocked, fair enough. Um, but yeah, I would try to simplify the system so there's not a huge process. So the system might be a few things to try to unlock the door. I would say, try to make it a one roll thing. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, and you, you know, if it's not, then you can move on. You might like these different systems, but it's probably, it might not be worth it. When you're doing combat, just let people go when they're able to. You have to have some sort of an order, obviously, um, stuff like that. And, and then, but then in terms of scheduling, it's kind of hard. But if you have that set up, then you don't have to match up schedules, which is kind of nice. If you're doing it in person, you absolutely, with no exceptions, have to match up your schedules for the exact time. But yeah. we don't have to. I was, I was going to harass there. I was like, I guess we, we should mention, uh, you know, I'm over here in the U.S., one of I know at least one of our two of our players in this campaign are in Canada, and you are all the way on the other side of the world. So you have was it a twelve hour difference or eleven? I think it's eleven Dep hour difference. Depends on daylight savings. Yeah. 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 Change, so like yeah. it's right now it's ten o'clock at night for me, and it's what nine in the morning for you. Other way, eleven in the morning. Yeah. Eleven in the morning. All right. So yeah, big difference. So even with that wacky schedule we're uh making it work so there's something else I, I was gonna say there and i totally forgot what it was <laughs> well maybe you'll think what i'm talking so one thing as a dm i've tried to do is take as little off the players as they want uh try to do the character sheets which is fine because it's a very simple character sheet if you guys want to have access and do that that's fine but um i feel like the more you put on the players the more likely somebody's going to drop the ball so one thing I've sort of got an idea of when people post. So I either, so like tens, when he's available, he usually posts a few times, but he seems to be available like once per day. So when I see him post, I'm like, Ugh, I do what I, whatever I can to you know, try to get on. Or usually when I wake up, there are a few posts. So I try to get things set up to where I probably wouldn't be able to post for a while, right? Like it's up to you guys mm -hmm. before I go to bed. So you guys can do it and you don't need me to. Um, so you, it takes a little while, but you just sort of think about it, and I don't put in that much effort, but I'm just aware of it. Like, oh, let's, let me try to get them set up at a spot where they can discuss things, Then they'll have all day long. Then I wake up, and usually there's some sort of a decision, and then we can continue. Yeah. So um, oh, you just got to be conscious of it. Yeah, I was going to say, I remember now, when we, when we started this campaign, you, you, had, you laid out a rule. You said, all right, you get one week to respond to something. That was your hard cutoff was, was one week, which is a very long time uh, for, I feel like, for instant messaging and stuff. But, like, we've never, I don't think we've ever no. once hit that limit. I think a couple days no. is the most we've gone. In, in the tens disappeared for a while in this other adventure. I said somebody disappeared for a while. Just, oh, we don't know what happened. So, but after a while, we just kind of waited and we said, well, you know what? Uh, we'll just continue on without him. There is an important point up here and he'll miss our ping, but luckily there wasn't too much. And then he came back. Clearly something not was going on in his life. Yeah. Uh, and then he came back and he's been just fine. 
Um, and that's the only time. Yeah. I, I set that up, but I haven't really had to prod people. I just mention something and usually people, oh yeah, okay. And then they... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, I'll say, so there's some times when uh, I'll, you know, a channel's lit up, I'll look at it. I'm like, okay, I see it. I'll, I'll get back to that. You know, I'll, when I can invest a better couple minutes, undistracted couple minutes, I'll answer and I'll forget to hit the mark is on red button and then I don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> oops yep so i we've also seen a few times or at least i have you know where people clearly have something going on but don't want to be the hold up so they just kind of put in the bare minimum to get their input and keep going but you know that's fine that's part of it yeah that's i think in the, the choosing the groups everybody's pretty friendly or when we put now like with uh with omega has now whatever we have like an important npc interaction i put it in a separate thread Mm -hmm. so if they miss it it's not quite the same but they can still go back and not feel like they missed an entire rp session but we can continue on yep. so these are just things we've just figured out and we're ready to adapt to what we need right it worked we'll, pretty well we'll put together a big book of Krig's tricks <laughs> all right so the next one is from ryan over on the discord also he said his biggest worry Excuse me. His biggest worry is being too preachy about rules, specifically in a play by post, because he feels like a play by post would require stricter rules. Now, I just got done talking about how you made a hard cutoff for a week, but it hasn't been a problem. So, do you feel like play by post requires stricter rules? Stricter rules in terms of the system yeah. or in terms of. Well, okay, like in the system. Rules lawyering, I guess, and like. Having, yeah, I'm not sure honestly. Maybe he means more um, strict on deadlines and saying, "Hey, you have to be present." Yeah, you mentioned that. <laughs> yeah, um, like I, uh, we'd already kind of mentioned. I actually, it seems that way, but I feel like if you had a more complex system, it would because that one guy has all the time in the world to find the rule that you broke, right? Yeah. Um, or the one guy just feels obligated to find that rule to make sure that they're not breaking the rule. But if you start with a simpler system, the game runs perfectly fine, and you don't have that. So uh, it could, but I, that's why if, if you start with a simpler system, um, it's fine. People can look up the, you know, the 10, 20 pages and you know they'll find the rule, and they're like it's not a big deal. So um, I, if you're afraid of that, try to find a, a less complicated system, and that should dissipate. Okay, I like that. Uh, the Lego Fan Twenty One, also on Discord. Uh, I've only really enjoyed play by post when there's like two players, because it's more likely that they'll both be online at the same time or pretty close to each other, so everything flows faster. Now that definitely happened. I think it was me and Steph in one of the earlier yeah. adventures we went on. Me and him, there was like this little sweet spot in the evening where we would both be on and just back and forth, do, 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 and we'd make a lot of progress. So I can I can understand where he's coming from there because when you start adding more people to the pot, then you're you're running into more of the wait times. It's like okay, three out of four people are available, but you're waiting on that fourth guy, and then when he finally gets able to do something. The other three are unavailable. <laughs> so. Yeah. For that, I would say, I mean, yeah, that's a possible issue. Um, how we have it set up, we have several different adventures going out. So people could group. Remember, I even told you um, when we start, you, we haven't needed to, but you could put, okay, this many people, and it needs to be, you know, this frequent or something. Mm -hmm. So so that people, you know, or this timeline, it got complicated. So you could do that if you had enough people. Um, I think that when people go in, they need to just adjust their expectations. And on the one hand, expect a slower game. But um, also remember, they might be surprised that you're not going to get tons each day, maybe, if you're not on the same time. But you'll get a little bit probably each day, and that little bit adds up really fast. And it's kind of fun. Because you get a little bit, then you get to think, you get to think like 24 hours till that next opening comes up. And then you have a great response or a great understanding of the situation because you've been ruminating over it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, which is kind of fun. So it, you go on with it, it might feel like you said, not actually as slow as you might think. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's a legitimate thing. But I think when we've played, we've all been surprised that that hasn't been the issue that I don't know that I thought it was going to be. Yeah, we can. I keep forgetting because I'm, I'm, kind of focused on my one character but yeah we can have two or three going 
and be in two or three different places at the same time. So you could also do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You slowed down with that. Um, the Steph's dungeon doing, crawl okay, one. Steph did that. Yeah, that one's just kind of stopped. And now, and now, um, maybe because it's gone slower, he's doing his own adventure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, so like, we'll, we'll just wait a little bit. We'll just wait a little bit. That's okay. No. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've noticed, even in the little thing we've done, so this is another interesting thing. It's a lot harder for me to be the player. When I'm a player, I have a situation, I have to think about it and map it out, and what would I do? As the DM, I've had to do a little bit of prep, but I can do that whenever I have time. And now you guys ask something, I can res- that's why I respond immediately, because, you know, I, I've already thought about the scenario, I know how they would respond, and I kind of know. But then you guys have to just sit there and reassess, like, what's the situation? And, you know, like in this current one, they're waiting because they got this slime from the slug, and if they eat it, they can breathe underwater. I didn't specifically explain that every single time they eat it, it would do that. So they were like, well, he didn't tell me what power I got, right? So just as a player, you know, maybe there's some missing information or you have to ask, what would I do? Or I don't want my character to die. Uh, so it's actually a little bit more tiring. But uh, interestingly enough, on the DM side, I just, I, I can shoot off an answer without much thought because I've already, I'm already kind of living in the world. So that's what I like about the play by post. I have time to think about things in my responses. I don't get put yeah. on the spot, which is actually kind of what uh, this next one is. I had mentioned it before. Josh's boxes on the YouTube post said he hasn't tried to play by post because he thinks it would feel lifeless to have to type out all your descriptions and character actions and whatnot. So see, I flourish in that environment <laughs> instead of having mm-hmm. to think instantly, you know, and characters yep. are like, yeah, I, I walk up or players, I guess I walk up to this guy and I say, howdy, how you doing? What's your name? And I'm just like, Whoa, uh, yep, I don't yep, know. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, I recent, uh, a while ago, actually on the mouse fitter, uh, they're talking about, do you, you know, do roles beforehand for like the weather if somebody's traveling and one person was like, I have to, because when it comes down to it, I just be like, it rains or, you know, the, no, no, they're like, it's like the water from the sky, you know, it comes down It's like, oh, that's me. I'll just, I have to have it in front of me or I'll forget the most basic stuff and then ask me to then come up with stuff, you know? I, I feel like Zark did very well at that, actually. He could just talk and go on with that. And I was like, dude, I... <laughs> um, so I like to be able to stop and think. What, okay, one thing. No offense, <laughs> box man, whatever. Um, but I mean, when you read a book, does it feel lifeless? Well, and that, that's what I thought yeah, of, know, too. I'm... I had the same thought. I was like, well, you know, if you like reading, it's... But <laughs> I guess he... I, uh... I said... He might be a big, I, big actor type. I don't know. I haven't. Yeah, I mean, I could, I could see it. I could see it. And, and you're, it is different, right? You watch a movie, you read a book. Yep. They're different. They, it, it's, people say one's better than the other. But, you know, the movie's nice because you just get to see these cool explosions. The book's nice because it's introspective and you get more detail. You know, they're different. So I could see that. Um, I would say try it out before you make a decision. Um, sometimes we do quick and it's fine. Like I sent you the thing, Scrat, that um, that uh, Chivalry Bean did of like his apple when he got it down. Oh, yeah. And, and it's just like I went. It was so descriptive. Like, like uh, you know, I shimmy over with my arms, grab the apple, you know, the sack with my legs, and I nibble off the the stem, and it falls right into the sack, and then I flip over. And I was like, man, I I saw that. <laughs> you know, it was it was so good. So uh, he's been doing really good on that. He didn't so much in our. Um, in in the the first adventure, but he's uh, he's been doing that. So M- I, meanwhile, I, I, you were just like roll for this. I was like, okay, <laughs> apples. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but and it's fine. And it, I I haven't I haven't felt it. Um, another thing you could do, I guess, if everybody's on board, you could do like a uh, an oral, like do voice messaging. But yeah. I don't have that much. I've also like for the I think I sent you like for the for the temple that they're in now, the slug one. I just had time to slowly sketch that up. I didn't have that before because I knew it would take them a while to get there. And then I got like a cool picture to show to them, right? Nice. Whereas I would either have to do lots of prep work to make sure I get it before the adventure or I just wouldn't have that. Or you've seen occasionally I've drawn a little picture. If I had a bit more time, I think I would do a little bit more of that stuff uh, and just be able to, to drop it to build in an atmosphere in a slightly different way. So, so it's different, but I, I, think you could, I think that there could be a lot of um, emotion there or whatever. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I'm... 
I don't think. I know my characters are, are better in the written form, but that's years of writing, right? So they, they should be better. <laughs> or like, look at the, the character. The character that I just did, like the old, he's kind of like a middle aged oh, sewer yeah. guy. Right? Yeah. Like, like whoa, ho, 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 no, it was good. Like, I never, I would have never done that in real life, or it would have taken a long time to develop that. But I'm just writing, it just kind of comes, and he's just chuckling and wander, meandering about this and kind of like taking jabs at people, but pretending, you know, like, oh, you know, I just got the map here in my mind, whatever. But I, I wouldn't have been able to come up with that. I would not have absolutely had it been in person. Uh, but I was able to put just a little bit of those things in it because I, I got to think about it, and I things come out differently when I type than when I I like it. I, I yeah. kind of prefer it too, but let's see. The last one we have here from the Gleeful Kraken, both on YouTube and Discord. Uh, oh she asks, what are some tips for making sure players don't feel left behind? For example, if two out of three are able to post a bunch and play out a long scene, what are some ways to make sure the third person doesn't feel pushed out of participating? And you already kind of answered that. Like you, you mentioned when we're having when we meet an NPC and have some dialogue, we open up a new thread. So all that can mm -hmm. take place. And we've even had instances where like we'll say me and Steph, for example, we did a lot of dialogue, uh, and then Omega joined in late. It's like, oh, you can go back to that thread, like you were there, and ask some questions or whatever, you know, and do that. So that's one way. But I'll I'll let you take it. Yeah, that was the concern. So if you remember the first one, I say we're like in beta right now. We're almost ready. That first adventure was like alpha, right? We're like anything could go. Try this, don't work, and so and everybody was totally okay with this nobody's complained so it's like um i don't know what to deal with it because it's a big concern uh so let's just try this and if somebody doesn't like it please let me know and so eventually we developed that make that separate thread but even remember before when you get when it was raining you guys went under the tree you met the chipmunk there was a snail with the runes on it and i moved on because then as a dm i'm afraid to move on yeah because i don't know what everybody's ready like oh sorry and then it's like oh i wanted to look at the snail Ah, oh, it's fine. We'll just retcon that. You know, there are points where maybe you can't totally retcon that. But it's like, okay, I said that you were here, but let's just, whatever. You know, like yeah. you, you just come over here. Let's pretend you went there. And as long as people, some people, I feel like that would drive them mad. But as long as there's this opening, let's figure out what works for us. This group, discuss if you feel like something's happening, and don't be afraid to like, oh, it's okay. We can go back. Oh, the narrative is a little funky. If it is some big crucial thing, oh, you know, some like you know, some damage or something big, we'd have to decide. But so far, that has happened a few times, and it's been really easy to like, oh, let's just pretend you didn't leave or or whatever, and nobody. It's like okay, that's fine. So as long as you have an openness to it, for the most part, it's been fine. Another thing that I've had is because we have a little adventure going out. When you come back, uh, when somebody joins, I tell them do your best to commit for one adventure. This is what I call the quest, the adventures. And it could last a while. It could last even a month or two, so be prepared. But really do your best, and we won't throw stones at you if you have to quit or you can't do it. But if you get through it, then you can either leave, and that's fine. Or then there's a tough time in your life, then you could wait until there's a time. Um, which I think, it's not play by post, you could do that with different things. But one reason why I'm doing this style of gameplay is because of play by post. To give people a chance. This is a real tough time in my life. Can I just not play for a while? Yeah, won't break the game or the story at all. Don't worry about it. You do have to get through that adventure probably, um, but you could stop. And then, yeah, as we mentioned, then you could go, you know, I noticed that this guy didn't talk as much. Maybe we could go on an adventure. They talk a lot. Maybe you guys just want to go alone. So you could also kind of figure out who, who works best together. Um, there is a little bit of that fear, but if you have a group, that, like I said, we don't have horror stories because I was very careful about who I let in. <laughs> um, uh, you know, everybody's been, I've never seen anything. P people are like, oh, no, that's fine. Oh, they're a little bit slow. Nobody's complained. Nobody's done anything. Everybody's gracious. If we moved on, nobody's gotten grumpy. Like, oh, okay. You know, can they, you know, and I try to offer to them to go back. Like, yeah, that's fine. So just talk about that beforehand. And I think there's a, there are a lot of ways to work through it. I don't know that we've gone through everything yet, but um, I was very concerned about that. And as long as everybody's open, you're just the nature of it. You can just have the different platforms and, and uh, people can go at different speeds at times. 
But really, the moral of the story here is uh, session zero, it sounds like. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. Have and a good we didn't have session, much session zero. zero. Yeah, yeah, we didn't have much. Um, partly because I knew the content would be fine. Nobody would do it. But well, also, also I, I don't um, think any of us had done it. We didn't know. So, so that's why I say it's alpha. It's like we're just making up rules. Guys, expect all the rules might be different next. Just bear with me. And yeah. I was all intimidated. People were like, come on, you're the DM. You need to have this ready. Everybody's like, uh, right. you know, yeah, or, or throwing suggestions. Hey, next time, next time, can we do this? Oh, that's a great suggestion. Thanks, man. Yeah. yeah. So, so for us, um, yeah, it is. It's all it's a, new. It's a session zero. And then, but you, like you've said, you also handpicked everybody. You didn't just open the door and say, hey, let's try this. So like you probably, I'm assuming, selected people that you knew could handle this. Our, our session zero was kind of bypassed. It was that whole campaign, that whole adventure was kind of session zero. Like yeah. <laughs> in terms of uh, game style, not content, but game style. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and like I said, when I, when I looked online, if I remember correctly, the number one thing that broke the play-by-post was not these questions that we have that are really good questions, but I think you can work around those. It's the, oh, man politics got involved oh. or people are just going to do this or that and it's like whoa boy so i would i know it's hard <laughs> you know finding people but it's easier to find people when it's online find people that you know that you know work together do that then i, I feel like now we're getting more solid if we added somebody and they were trouble we could squeeze them out or they would just conform or something but i i feel like had i just opened it up on some random forum or said hey who wants to join uh, we would not be playing anymore. <laughs> no, no, that that have fallen through. <laughs> yeah, it was. A, for, I guess probably for every thousand randos you try, one of them actually works. Yeah, you know, some nice odds similar to that. But that is it, my man. That was the whole thing we had here. We only went for like an hour and a half. That's not going to take forever to edit <laughs> at all. So. Yeah. I didn't Glad do the pauses, you could, like I said. Yeah, glad yeah. you could come on, man. It was fun. I want to do more stuff like this. I have no idea what I'm doing, in case you can't tell. So that might have been why we went so long. Yeah, well, but I, okay. I think it's if you have a basic idea and you just throw some questions down, you got your own, I guess you got to edit it, but you don't have to do the script. You don't have to, you know, it can go on for a long time. Like I said, uh, you and I were talking, I was part of a podcast with this guy and his interviews are always the longest because just interviews yeah so uh, it it, it's in some ways it's more work but there's another you know you up your sleeve few ideas to talk with people i want to do a video going over my entire first campaign beginning to end and that's going to be like six hours long and i can't bring myself to do it <laughs> and the longer i wait the more of it i forget so i won't be able to do it <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but that's another project. What is what is the next interview that we do here on A Squirrel Plays? I don't know. I'm going to get Scotty on here. DM Scotty himself. Do it. Do it. <laughs> do it, man. I bet you do it. I have no idea what we talk about. I mean, easy D6, I'm talk, sure. But <laughs> talk, talk about like, yeah, no, that's a bit, talk about like the genesis of like what led you to do it. Did you sit down and decide to make a system or did... You just realize this is a system you developed <laughs> to, to get the game going. you just like, wow, look at this. We don't play, we're playing our own game. Let's codify it. Well, I it's think, actually, I think be helpful. the answer to that question is in his book uh, right there at the beginning. He was just, and I think I said it at the I moment, think it's what I just said, right? Yeah. He, he got tired of, he was really tired of games where you had to stop playing and go look up a rule. He hated them. Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm tired of stopping and looking stuff up. I just want to play. So that's why he he made that. Okay, make... so he did, he 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 went into that. Yeah, but I that'd be great. I'd, I'd watch that. I gotta get my interview skills up. So mm -hmm. I find another. Anyway, yeah, I find another one. <laughs> yeah. So say bye YouTube. All right, goodbye YouTube. Bye it's been YouTube. Nice. Well, I'll still be here. <laughs> All right, that's the end of the video, my friends. It was a lot of fun to do, but I'll let you all decide whether or not it was worth doing. I like the idea of bringing in the community and getting everybody involved one way or the other, but I can also understand not everyone wants to be involved, and that's perfectly okay. I'm just trying to make room for those that do. 
So, glad you stuck around and made it this far. Mad props to you for doing so, regardless of how many days it may have taken. I appreciate each and every one of you. And with that, I'm out of here, man. I'll see y'all either in the next stream or the next video. Thank <laughs> you.